Welcome, I'm John Caldera, president of the Independence Institute and your devil's advocate. A little later, we're gonna to talk to someone who survived the Chinese government and find out what's different there than here. But first, I wanna to talk to somebody who's a bit of a Colorado favorite, Don Bondell, who is an author of how many Western books have you written? A uh, bunch of Westerns, 28 books altogether. 28, some, 28 books. Some military thrillers and most Westerns. So, some have compared you to uh, Louis L'Amour, that this is, uh, uh, this is, this is a, you've got a Western. I've been very fortunate. Yeah. Yeah. You've been fortunate. Hey, but be before I, I talk about that, I, I want to talk to you about some of your political work, which I find fascinating, that you do something called stolen valor that is you out people who who claim they have a military record that they might not have give me an example first and of people who, who do something like that a good example of one that I worked on was the mayor of Atlantic City New Jersey if you remember on the national news several years ago he was outed and they said the mayor had gone AWOL Bob Levy uh, they said mayor of Atlantic City is AWOL uh, and that he was a former Green Beret and served two terms in Vietnam. We ran his records and found out he was a switchboard operator in Vietnam. He never went to jump school, never became a paratrooper, never, you know, which they have to do to be a Green Beret. I work with the fakewarriors.org, which is the largest organization that's exposed more phonies than any other group. And I out fake Green Berets for them specifically people that like that mayor who campaigned and got elected he had his teenage son make tv commercials bragging about his dad being a green beret being wounded in vietnam he ended up with a lengthy prison term he ended up uh, re resigning in disgrace as mayor of atlantic city which i told him he would do and i also told him he would publicly apologize to all the men past and present of the U.S. Army Special Forces, he did. Why is that important to you? What, what is it that drives you? This is not a job, this is an avocation, this is something that you spend your time doing. What is it that drives you that, it, that if people lie about their military record, that why, why do you care? What, what does it matter to you and, and people like you? That's a very good question. I have two sons that are Green Berets now, and when they went into the military, they both had successful careers already. And I, I asked them why they wanted to do it, and they both told me that I had friendships with the guys who served on my A-team in Vietnam in 1968 and 1969 that were as close as brothers. All these guys were like uncles to them growing up, and they said they wanted those kind of friendships. Some of those guys that served with me in Vietnam remain there. You know, their right. body is in foreign soil, either in Vietnam or other places where they were fighting in the cause of freedom. And so it's up to people like me to keep their legacy pure and alive. And when somebody steals valor, when they, they claim that they got the Distinguished Service Cross, or the Medal of Honor, or the Purple Heart, or any kind of valorous uh, medal, and they claim that for themselves when they didn't do it, that is actually worse than stealing money from a person. Why is that? Because you're stealing their honor. You're stealing their valor. And I have friends who died in Vietnam who can't protect that legacy of honor that they left with their families. So it's up to guys like me to protect it. Now, I can understand when applying for a job, people lie on their resume. And when they lie on the resume, they're trying to make themselves stand out. Sure. I understand politicians want to do this as well. I, I saw something going around on the internet that had all of our former presidents from Ike on in uniform, except of course, Clinton and Obama they had Clinton in a, um, uh, a high school band uniform. And but, Obama, I saw the right, uniform, right. yeah. <laughs> and the thought being that Americans seem to prize uh, politicians who have done service to the country that, that way. Uh, wh why do you think they need to lie about it? What, what is it you think that a politician is gaining by stealing that, that value? Well, as I said, I, I specifically deal with fake Green Berets. When I earned my Green Beret in 1967, 
Out of every hundred men who tried, only three got a Green Beret. When my sons, within the past uh, decade and a half, earned their Green Berets, same standard. Three out of every 100 that try get a Green Beret. When you work your butt off like, like that, and then you have friends lose their lives, and they have an elite status like that, something you're incredibly proud of, then, uh, you know, it, it's incumbent upon those who have gone on, which I have, I'm 68 now, and it, it's incumbent upon us to protect that legacy that's been passed on. And I'm so proud of my sons and the other young men serving on special forces now. They're so much better than I was. If people want to help out or get more information about that project, uh, and see who has faked their valor. Is there a website or a, a place where they can go? Fakewarrior.org, or they can go to pownetwork.org. And then for fake Navy SEALs, they can go to VeraSeal, V-E-R-I-S-E-A-L. Uh, this ain't hell, but you can see it from here. That's what you can just Google that. There's a number of websites that out uh, phonies. Let me, let me switch gears completely. We okay. have nothing to do with anything. All right. 29 Western fictional, 28, 28, 28. fictional works. Now, I'm, I'm Not all about, Westerns, but most, mostly Westerns. Most were Westerns. You know, Strongheart, this was a number one bestseller on, on Amazon for, yeah. for Western. I mean, that, that's, that's huge. That might be becoming the, the new uh, honor, not the New York Times. And this, no, this came New out. New York Times is. Uh, uh, this came out in uh, about five years ago, was that right? Or 10 uh, yeah, years ago? Well, not quite that long right. ago, but uh, 2011. Yeah. Right. And you've, you've, you've now updated it with, with Blood Feather, so this, Blood is, this Feather is out is in there. Blood Feather is a sequel, and then I have another sequel which will be released worldwide uh, January 2016 by my publisher, Berkeley Penguin Random right. House. Tell me, what is the magic about Westerns? Now, I, uh, I remember the Michener books, and I remember some, I never really got into the genre, but there, there is a love of Western fiction with a, with a bit of historical references, drawing the picture. What, what draws you to that? What draws readers to that? Well, some people are drawn. I wish more were, and that's one of my goals. I could be making more money. I was doing military thrillers, and my editor was also Tom Clancy's editor for 25 years, and he's been my editor for 25 years. I could make more money doing that, but I want to do westerns. I grew up in Akron, Ohio, a little boy dreaming about being an Indian or a cowboy when I grew up. Which, which, one did, which, which one did you want to be? Well, I wanted to be an Indian, but I'm, I'm actually like a strawberry cupcake with vanilla icing because <laughs> I'm white on the outside and red on the inside. And, and so, but I, I'm a cowboy with kind of Indian leanings. And uh, my fiance is half Navajo, so that kind of helps and compensates. But anyway, I, I, uh, I believe very strongly in uh, John Wayne's characters and Roy Rogers and Gene Autry. Why? What, what is it about? I mean, the John Wayne character is such an iconic character. I mean, we, you say John Wayne, and it's not an actor. It's a, it's a brand. It's a, it's a flavor. What is it about that that, that draws you? Well, Why John my, Wayne? One of my proudest possessions was I went on a date with John Wayne's oldest grandchild, his granddaughter, Anita LaCava Swift, it was a platonic date she's married. But anyhow, she gave me this bracelet that says courage on one side and johnwayne.org on the other. And then these bracelets, John Wayne wore one of these bracelets his whole life from the time he made the movie The Green Berets. He was given a mountain yard bracelet. I lived with the mountain yard tribes people in Vietnam. And to me, it was kind of like being uh, a white guy living with an Indian tribe back in the 1800s. They're a separate race from the Vietnamese and they were the toughest fighters in all of Vietnam. Very primitive people. They wore loincloths, the women were bare-breasted and they wore little uh, black cotton skirts called atocs and they primarily ate rats and, and monkeys and carried uh, bamboo crossbows and spears. 
and we trained them about animal husbandry, first aid, soap. They had never had soap before. Built churches for what, them. What does that have to do with John John Wayne? What is well, the, John what is Wayne the made pull? the John Wayne made the movie The Green Berets, and Green Berets associate closely with the American cowboy, as you saw him back in the 50s and 60s on a Saturday morning matinees and, and on TV. Roy Rogers, Gene Autry, Rex Allen, Lash LaRue, the Range Rider, you know, Matt, Marshall Matt Dillon, and so on. And I always wanted to be a cowboy when I grew up. Now I am. I'm a real cowboy with a real horse and a real ranch. But when, and, when, you, when, you, when and, you take those characters and you just name them from Gene Autry to John Wayne, what about their character is it makes you go there rather than than another brand of personality that, that, what what is it the pioneer spirit you know a man's only as good as his word same thing with a woman a woman's only as good as their word the pioneers that built this country were hardy stock one of my pet peeves i've worked on race relations my whole adult life and uh, i can't stand it that you have what i call poverty pimps that want to keep, for example, our black population down and tell them they're victims of whitey. They are not victims of whitey. They're Americans and they have every opportunity. We got a black president. We have a black attorney general or had one. Anybody in America can achieve anything. You just got to have the gumption to get up there and do it. And I'm sick and tired of these idiots that get up there that try to act like they're the saviors of the black race or whatever saying you're victims and you're being kept down and all that instead of saying you came from a hardy race of people that survived slavery, survived the wilds of Africa and all that, and, and you can lift yourself up and accomplish anything you want if you get an education and you work your butt off. And that's the cowboy spirit? It is. The cowboy spirit is to be hardy, to take care of yourself, and, you know, I, I have a code of the West, and unfortunately, I don't have it memorized. I have it on my website. But, um, you know, I have things like a, a cowboy is always glad to share his campfire, his grub with you, and his water with you, as long as you don't try to take it from him. And, and uh, cowboy, everything is black and white, except for skin color. Who's your, and, who's your favorite author? My favorite author? Probably Louis L'Amour. You know? Why? Well, Louis L'Amour told simplistic stories. A lot of them were made into movies. A lot of them were John Wayne movies and Sam Elliott and, and uh, Tom Selleck movies and so on. And, uh, you know, with a simple uh, moral story. And they had simple morals. And, you know, you don't break your word. You don't steal. You know, you, you protect your spread. You people, protect your country. People want to check out your... Uh, all your books and see what you've written. Where do they go? Amazon.com, BarnesandNoble.com, BorderBooks.com, bookstores. Uh, my books are sold all over the world. Uh, over three million are in print. Or they can go to my website, DonBendel.com. Don, thank you so much. Stay tuned. You're going to enjoy this one.